Hello, I'm Dominic. I'm the Festival Director of the Bournemouth Writing Festival and I'm looking forward to welcoming you to Bournemouth Town Centre on the 26th, 27th and 28th of April 2024 for a three-day weekend chock full of talks, walks, writing workshops and loads of fun stuff to inspire you to write. Today I'm really excited to welcome Matt Shaw to our series of YouTube interviews to bring the festival to life. Now Matt has self-published over 400 titles and has even started up his own film production company to turn some of those books into movies. He has turned his writing into a career, so I'm really excited to talk to him um, about what he's going to be discussing and talking about um, at his talk at the Writing Festival. Now Matt writes for a very specific niche audience, which I'm sure we're going to be talking about later on in the chat. So without much further ado, I'd like to welcome Matt. Hiya, thanks for um, having me today. Uh, I started writing over 10 years ago. In fact, it's probably like 15, 16 years ago. And I accidentally became a full-time author because it's not something I actually wanted to do with my life. I wanted to make films. Um, but one thing led to another. I started writing stories and I was just releasing them because I thought I'm not good enough to get an agent or a big publishing deal because, you know, if we go back to, the, to that time years and years ago, all of the publishers then would, it was just the big boys in town, you know, like Penguin, Harper Collins, and I'm under no illusions. My writing is not to their style. Uh, so I thought, well, uh, Autonomy's come along that's kind of run by a, a division within HarperCollins. Um, I don't think it exists anymore, but I started putting some of my writing there. Then a website called Lulu sprang up from nowhere and allowed you to turn your books into electronic formats or even have it made into a little paperback. So I thought, okay, I, I'm vain enough to do that. So I, I have my books made up. And then Amazon came along with um, Kindle, you know, KDP um and then that was a game changer i just put all of my books onto kindle released it thinking i don't care if it does anything because i'm doing it for me um but then yeah a few years after that lightning in a bottle you know i uh i released well i'd written quite a few books but i released one book that just hit the audience at the right time and catapulted me into my career um I'm, I've been offered agents and publishing deals since then, but there's no point because now I'm at the stage where all they would do for me is take my money. Yeah. It's like. So I mentioned at the beginning that you focus on a very niche audience um, and, you know, the, you, you, you've published an incredible amount of titles. So can you tell everyone about the niche audience that you target? What? This isn't entirely true. I, yes, I'm, I'm known for extreme horror. So a lot of my books aren't pleasant, but I actually write in loads of different genres. I, I, I write children's books, but they just don't sell as well. You know, I couldn't make a living from those, which is unfortunate because it's my preferred style. But the, the extreme audience, um, they like their horror really dark. And it's to give you an idea, it's it's so dark. Today I received a letter from one of my readers. Um, the Australian Customs Department seized my books and won't let them into the country. Uh, so she'd ordered some signed books and they are now being destroyed by uh, the Australian government as we speak. Um, but you know, it's all one step ahead of the marketing game. So now I took those three books, put them into one volume gave it a really nice cover, called it um, Where the Small Flowers Blossom and put a fake blurb on the back about 1939, children being evacuated from London, um, you know, pre-war stuff. And they discover themselves in the English countryside. And when you open the book up, it's actually that story for the first 10 pages, just in case the customs people flick through it. And then it stops and then it's my horror books. Um, so, yeah, that's the kind of audience I go for. Ones that really like disgusting stuff. But that's so funny and, and that's incredible. And, and I suppose that's, you know, you found such a uh, great audience that obviously love that work. And it's not in the mainstream. It's not in the public domain, as you said. Um, you know, it's not a, not a kind of genre that 
Harper Collins and Penguins of this world. So that's what I mean about having that that niche audience. So then when you bring out another book, you have that ready-made audience. Is that correct or? Yeah. Um, so when I release books, I normally let them know whether it's going to be extreme psychological. Um, if it's a children's book, it's under a different name entirely because obviously I don't want kids finding my adult stuff. Um, and, you know, you, you can see the sales going like this because the extreme stuff is always up here. The psychological stuff kind of does this and then the kids stuff does this. But that's where I get my enjoyment, which is why I carry it on. Because I said at the start, I write for me um and yeah because i write so quickly and and so fast i've got the the audience is there ready to buy the next book and you talk about the mainstream this is probably going to come up during the festival and i don't know whether you've seen anything about it yet but it's not good so i'll warn you now um one of my books hit the mainstream last year and they try to cancel me so you know there's youtube videos calling me a misogynist there's there's videos stating that i've gone to america to stalk someone um and i was arrested over there for it all rubbish um of course it's just people taking bits of a story and twisting it to try and get their own clicks and likes um but yeah I, when i landed in the mainstream it was not pretty <laughs> well i suppose that all, all publicity is good publicity is, is the as the as it goes but when you come to the writing festival you're not going to be talking about extreme horror you're going to be talking about how you turned self-publishing into a full-time career um and you were at our festival last year and um, thank you so much for coming to that and it was hugely popular i think you sold out and you were by far um had the most positive feedback of all of the speakers that we had so you obviously resonate um, with your journey so for those who didn't um, who, who didn't go to that talk last year. What can people expect from your talk this year? Yeah, I mean, thanks for inviting me last year as well, because I actually had a blast. You're never sure what to accept, uh, expect when someone's like, oh, I'm doing a writing festival, and you're like, yeah, all right. Um, but yeah, I mean, your event was huge last year, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got going for it this year. Because, um, you know, considering it was the first year in 2023, it was, it was impressive. Um, with regards to my talk this time you're right we're not going to be talking about the content that i write because it's not relevant um what we're going to be talking about is um the difference between like novellas novels short stories drabbles what to publish when to release things how to hit the um amazon keywords to ensure that your book charts as soon as it charts you get the best sellers tag so little tips and tricks on how to get that which people love seeing um guides to working at conventions you know book fairs and things where you're selling your books basically we're going to be doing a real overall look at the publishing thing as a whole right from the very start right the way through to their their book is out and where to go to next and we will be including um audio stuff with that as well so there's really going to be something for everyone and hopefully by the time people walk out they'll feel inspired enough that they think i can do this myself as well you know because we don't need self-publish uh, we don't need small presses and things like that we can do it by ourselves and Matt, you've walked the walk, you know, so you have literally turned self-publishing into a full-time career. So your insights are going to be fantastic for all the different writers we have, because we have people for, uh, who are still deciding whether to self-publish or to go through the traditional route, whether they're just beginning right the way through to those who've already published, either self-published or through an agent. So um, it's going to be fantastic. So really looking forward to, to, to seeing you at the festival, Matt. No, thank you very much. I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back and um, hopefully get some people inspired to uh, get writing as long as they don't take my audience. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I have read a couple of your first chapters of some of your books and they're not for the faint hearted, I can tell you that. So um, Matt's talk, Turn Self-Publishing into a Full-Time Career, is going to be on Saturday the 27th of April at 11.30 a.m. in the Pavilion Dance Main Theatre. Um, so make sure you book your ticket and secure your slot because as I said last year it was hugely popular and sold out. So thank you so much Matt and um, see you at the Writing Festival uh, 26th, 27th and 28th of April in Bournemouth Town Centre. Thank you and I'll see you then.